Let's have a look at how we find the cube roots of a complex number. And if a complex number is k, its cube roots must satisfy z cubed equal to k. And the useful result that z cubed in polar form is r cis theta cubed, that is equal to r cubed cis 3 theta for any complex number, that result will actually help us to find cube roots of a complex number. So to see the full process of finding cube roots of a complex number, let's consider finding the cube roots of negative 125j. And you'll notice this number is written in Cartesian form, so the first step is to convert it to polar form. And an argand diagram can often be helpful here. And as usual, this is set up with the real part of Z on the horizontal axis. The imaginary part is the vertical axis here. Now this particular number only has an imaginary part of negative 125, so that will be drawn here, that's straight down the negative y axis. So the magnitude of this number, being the distance from the origin, is just 125, and the argument of this number, because we're going round clockwise here, not anti-clockwise, that is negative 90, or negative pi on 2 radians. So therefore, negative 125j is of the form 125 cis negative pi on 2. Now the next step is we can use the useful result I referred to before, that z cubed, if the unknown cube roots are of the form r cis theta, it will be of the form r cis theta cubed, which is r cubed cis 3 theta. Hence, for this case, r cubed cis 3 theta should get us back to the number we wrote down here, 125 cis negative pi on 2. And so we can now equate the magnitudes and arguments of these. Looking at the magnitudes first of all, we must have r cubed equal to 125. And in that case, the cube root of that the real number cube root of that is just 5, so here r will be 5 for all of our cube roots, meaning they have magnitude 5. Then 3 theta must be equal to negative pi on 2. But when we're looking at angles on the circle, if we add 2 pi onto this we'll get an equivalent angle. So negative pi on 2 plus 2 pi will also give us 3 theta. And similarly, we could add another successive integer multiple of 2 pi to get that negative pi on 2 plus 4 pi will also give an equivalent angle. And every complex number has three cube roots, so you should do three equivalent forms of this always. And these work out to be 3 theta is negative pi on 2. This one becomes 3 pi on 2, and the next one becomes 7 pi on 2. Dividing each of those by 3, theta is therefore negative pi on 6, pi on 2, and 7 pi on 6. Hence, since our cube roots have the form r cis theta, in this case our cube roots will have the form z is 5 cis negative pi on 6, 5 cis pi on 2, and 5 cis 7 pi on 6. So this is our cube roots in polar form. If we wanted to write those in Cartesian form, then remember that cis theta is cos theta plus j sine theta. So for instance, 5 cis negative pi on 6 is 5 lots of cos negative pi on 6 plus 5 j sine negative pi on 6. And so that first one, for instance, is going to work out in this case to give us now cos negative pi on 6 that is just equal to square root of 3 on 2 cos negative pi on 6 is and sine negative pi on 6 that's minus a half so that'll be 5 lots of square root of 3 on 2 minus a half j meaning that that one simplifies to become 5 root 3 on 2 minus 5 on 2 times j for the first of our cube roots Similarly, the next one, 5 cis pi on 2, is just going to become 5 all multiplied by cos pi on 2 plus j sine pi on 2. Now, cos pi on 2 is just 0, and sine pi on 2 is just 1. 
So that one actually just becomes 5j. And the last one, 5 cis 7 pi on 6, once again that's just going to be 5 lots of cos 7 pi on 6 plus j sine 7 pi on 6, which works out to be, in this case, 5 times negative root 3 on 2 minus a half j, which becomes negative 5 root 3 on 2 minus 5 on 2 times j. So therefore these are our three cube roots of negative 125j. And for an exercise you might like to plot these cube roots on an Argan diagram. What you'll find is that they're actually evenly spaced, 120 degrees apart on the Argan diagram. And this in fact is always the case for cube roots of a complex number.